now. Uh, that has begun. Um, so thank you everybody for welcoming me. Uh, my name is Michael and I'm the grants lead on the uh, National All Executive. Thank you very much for taking time out of your very busy schedule. Um, I promise that this session uh, is intended to be collaborative and to be kind of uh, thoughtful and provocative, to give you some ideas to think about, and of course, to ask any questions you may have uh, about preparing an all grant submission. But let me start by saying that I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that we are all on. For myself, I'm in uh, Burlu in Perth. Um, and I'm on Wajak Nunga Boja, and I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional custodians uh, of, of this land. And I encourage you uh, to do the same. Please feel free to um, let us know about um, the places that you're on, uh, on country, uh, through the chat. Um, it's really great, uh, I think, when we do that in, in an all setting. Um, I've just introduced myself. My name is Michael, and I am the, uh, this year I began to work in the role of being the um, Grants and Awards Lead. Uh, and this session is really designed to give a little bit of context for, first of all, what's required in the um, grant application itself, and a bit of an idea of what to look for and some tips, mostly in terms of preparing the application and an idea for the kind of um, projects that we're interested in, um, and, 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 and also an opportunity to exchange and hear about uh, what you're thinking about uh, and, and what you're planning on doing. Thank you, Nicholas. I can see that you've typed into the chat. Uh, and thank you, Karen, as well. So if it's okay, I'm going to share my screen because I do have some slides, which I will make available later. At any point, because I'm sharing my slides in full screen, please do feel to just turn on your microphone and say something, uh, and I'll try to get to any comments that are in the chat. And I do apologize. I'm much more used to using um, Microsoft Teams, so I apologize if things are not so clear. Can you all see that in the chat? Can we see the front page? Can anyone give me a thumbs up or a visual cue? Fantastic. So this first page is really just, it's got my email. Uh, you're more than welcome to contact me after this session or at any point in preparing uh, your grant. If you have any specific queries, um, that's just the front page. Uh, some details, just a reminder, all this information is on the grants website, which you can find by clicking here. Uh, so this year we're only doing one round and we're moving to, excuse me, towards a structure with one round. Um, I think in many ways it just makes things uh, easier for applicants um, in terms of uh, uh, applying because we're all so, so busy. Um, and this round will finish on November the 11th uh, at 11.55 p.m. Um, if you click on that link there, you can see all the relevant details, including the actual application form. So if this is your first time, applying for an all grant. Um, of course, you will prepare your documentation um, in terms of, you know, spend detail preparing what you're applying, but actually the submission is on that page and you'll be sort of pasting the information into the form, into the specific sections. I want to point out that there is an increase in grant funding from this year, uh, up to $8,000 per grant for specific cases. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, what that kind of means, um, but with 6,000 sort of as a standard uh, point. Of course, as part of your application, you will identify how much you're planning to uh, apply for and you'll need details in your budget um, that fits in relation to that. And in general, we recommend uh, a realistic budget. If your budget happens to be less than that 6,000, that's perfectly fine. Um, you know, I would recommend strongly that you budget in accordance. If it's only 4,000, if it's only 5,000, that's fine. If it is 8,000 or 7,000 or 6,000, you need to make sure that you're giving appropriate detail in your budgeting section. Highly recommend that when you're preparing your application, that you tailor and articulate um, your information as much as possible to, your all, to the all goals. And you can click on these here and you can see um, there's a list of those. Please note that the principal application must be a current all member. Doesn't mean that all members for the application or all team members must be current all members. That's not required, but the principal must at the time of application. And please make sure that you complete it in full with all relevant details. Again, any questions, please let me know or type into the chat and I'll get back to them later. So some general tips for submission and application, and this of course will not just relate to an all grant, but I've tried to articulate them as much as in terms of what 
um, um, the, 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 the all, for the all space here and, and what we're providing. The first point is really the need and the value of your project. And, and you know, being able to, I recommend actually using those words uh, or similar, um, not just sort of saying, you know, I'm applying uh, because I think it's a good project. You know, you need that level of detail. And being able to identify, just like in any form of research, where there's a problem or a gap and how your project is aiming to address it. And so what I've done here is I've tried to put in some reflective questions here. I recognise not everyone is able to attend today, or you might be part of a larger team. And I thought that these questions might be useful prompts to discuss with your team in terms of your application. You know, why is this issue that you're identifying, is it important, you know? And in particular, how does it relate to, you know, all practitioners or the all space? And in what way does your project provide or attempt to provide or prompt a form of a response? So I think those can be really useful uh, starting point to look at, you know, um, generally framing a project. The next one is, of course, clear and realistic objectives in the time frame you're given. So you need to have specific and measurable goals. That's really what the um, review committee will be looking for, with a focus on elements of time, budget, and personnel. I kind of objected this term personnel here, but we mean all the people involved. It's a very management word. All the people involved with the project, recognising that you know if you have a team project, there will often be different people doing different things and to articulate that and, and how that works. So a few again, a few more reflective questions. Sorry, I do get a bit carried away sometimes with my questions. Again, what do you hope to achieve in the project? That really helps, I think, to identify those objectives. And as we know from experience, Working in universities, we often don't identify, we might start out with a particular objective uh, and then realise how realistic it is. Sometimes that only happens when we begin a project and see how much work is involved. I recommend you doing that from this stage really as best as possible. And here again, talking about it amongst a team or getting, a, say for example, a critical friend or someone to come in and look at what you've presented objectively uh, will help with that. Because often what we think of as realistic and clear we might show it to someone else and they say, no, do this, or what about that? Um, so, you know, this, this is something to really, I think, pay attention to. How long do you expect this project to take? What will most of your budget be spent on? Again, this is kind of that time, or so that budget component. And who is going to carry out what tasks? And again, as we know, generally with research and with writing, we don't usually get this right on the first draft. We recommend that you spend some time you know, uh, use a bit of incubation strategy if you need to, take some time away, come back to it again. And as I mentioned just before, share it with others. Third point here, make sure you're locating your research in relation to existing knowledge and practice. Demonstrate your awareness of other related projects, approaches, perspectives, and techniques. Now, again, we're talking about having academic literature or research that's been published or is available or is known in the space. If you can refer to that, that's great. So here's the reflective questions. How does your project build on, differ from, and or contribute to existing knowledge and practice? And sometimes a really good starting point for this is just to simply look at, you know, the context of what's happening in like your space, in, in your institution. And then, you know, have you had discussions with others from other institutions, maybe in your state or across Australia? Or are you aware of what's happening, say, internationally? Um, and a lot of us are really well connected with, you know, different types of associations and networks. So here you're free to go, of course, beyond the all space and look at <clears throat> what's known, what's being shared, what's prominent and identifying yours in relation to that. And this really means, you know, having some uh, references uh, and having some, you know, uh, papers or reports, bringing those into your application really help to give context to that and tying them. We're, we're, we're looking for that in terms of reviewing grant applications. Some more budget. I think I've mentioned this already. We want detailed and realistic details here, de detailed and realistic elements here. Make sure you're breaking down your cost and justifying your expenses on this front. Please try and be sure that your budget aligns with your project timeline and scope. A really good example of this is that, you know, if you're identifying, for example, in many cases for a grant, there's a research assistant, you know, think about what level of payment and how many hours and 
Um, you know, is that realistic? Would that person be qualified to fulfill that task? It's more so the articulation within the um, grant application. It's more the thinking and preparing in advance. Uh, and talking about that, if you're part of a team, making sure you're sharing that. And if somebody says, hey, that's not realistic, or it might take longer than that, or we can't ask somebody who's at that Q level to do that kind of thing, um, really making sure that you've kind of fleshed that out first. So some reflective question. Is my budget appropriate and realistic? It's a good one to ask. Again, asking somebody else, perhaps even somebody who's not part of the project. Hey, does this sound realistic to you to be able to perform this particular task in this particular time with this much of a budget? Um, have you benchmarked related costs? That's a really good thing to do. Uh, and that can then be used to specify your own budget items. Next point, the importance of collaboration and involvement with others. Yet yeah, when you can demonstrate that you're working with others in terms of within your institution and also across institution, that really does potentially enhance or expand the impact of your project. So this could be meaning that you're working with other professional staff, for example, other institutions or um, you know, um, uh, uh, within your institution or academic staff, students or any other related stakeholders. Uh, in many cases, this can actually strengthen submission. So we are in particular looking for projects that demonstrate cross-institutional collaboration or you know, cross-disciplinary or you know, inside institutions that, that pair up different types of stakeholders. So some questions to ask. Do I know of any others that are working in this space that I might want to collaborate with? And if so, how would they enhance or you know, extend this project? And if so, how do I go about starting this process? These may be people that you already know, or they may be people that you've, you know, seen presenting or read um, a paper they've written or acknowledged that they've presented somewhere and kind of thought, hey, that's kind of closely aligned and potentially reaching out. In, in many cases, that can help strengthen um, the nature of your um, of your. Um, application and your submission. And I think it also kind of strengthens the, the all space itself and gets all practitioners connecting with one another and sharing. We're really hoping uh, to see that too. I'm just gonna very quickly tip in. I've got some more coming, but I'm just gonna see the chat section just to see if there's any questions. Yeah, oh, so Deb, Debbie, you put in some great tips too. Yeah, some really good points about, um, you know, salary changes and things like that. Yeah, thank you for that, Debbie. Thanks for sharing that one. I'm just going to go back for a second. Okay, so moving on to the next slide. Some more general tips. And this is the last, I think the last one for this session. Make sure that you're detailing your plan so that you're sharing it and disseminating. And this is particularly important when you're working in a group. As much as we tend to work in silos, uh, for different types of projects, whether we're writing reports or whether we're writing you know, grant applications or journal articles, whatever we're doing, um, often we end up working separately. And then there comes this stage, especially time's always such a factor, where we sort of push everything together and we think, yeah, that kind of looks okay. And, you know, maybe we'll select somebody, maybe the, uh, the principal applicant to go through and kind of smooth things out and join things together. That's a very common process. Um, and that's really great. But sometimes with all the things you're juggling, there isn't quite enough attention given to what you're planning to do in terms of if you're successful getting the grant, in terms of how you would share and disseminate. You know, In this case, how could you possibly share the outcomes of your project? And most importantly, can you demonstrate the potential ways that this could contribute to the all space? And I find that in general, Sometimes we're really humble on this front and we'll say, you know, something really small. It could make a small contribution to our understanding of, you know, student engagement. I encourage you in your application, you know, we're talking about potential outcomes. So be confident in demonstrating, you know, broaden your scope. There is nothing wrong with putting in an application that's ambitious. And then, you know, due to circumstances, something happens. And in the time frame you've got, maybe you're not able to necessarily achieve all those objectives. That's a common part of uh, scholarship of teaching and learning and research in general. So be, you know, be confident in the way that you're presenting uh, your plans. Uh, and of course, whenever you can demonstrate a broader impact and potentially multiple outcomes, so, you know, journal article, conference paper, those kind of things, and more of those kind of things, um, the stronger 
your grant application often appears, especially in terms of its impact. Um, yeah, and you can consider the scope beyond, oh, and I've just recognised a typo, sorry about that, that should be just, presentations, publications or workshops. Those are the standard things we give, but you might be able to identify something different to that or something um, broader than that. Um, and when you can demonstrate impact beyond just your institution, that's great. And that's another reason why I think any uh, cross-institutional collaborations or uh, collaborations across disciplines and backgrounds, things like that, they really help to strengthen um, uh, uh, impact and, and reach. Uh, and next, make sure you've got a plan for forming and editing your project before submission. I kind of mentioned this earlier when I was talking about silos. Uh, if you've got multiple team members, make sure that you're all having enough time to contribute uh, and you're all kind of, you know, after that time that you're aligned. That can be very, very difficult. But we, I recommend for whoever's going to be the principal uh, applicant, if you haven't selected a principal applicant yet, I really think you should elect somebody. Uh, and then really as a group, think about who is doing what and what timeline you need working up to the November deadline to allow all of you to contribute. We also recommend things like uh, version control. You know, MS uh, Word is a wonderful application uh, to use and to share and can be used across institutions in terms of comments, feedback. Clearly mark, if you're adjusting something, you know, clearly mark your comments from your team members. It just avoids confusion. It just streamlines. A lot of you are already doing these things, but I just thought I'd mention them here. Um, and, and of course, make sure you're giving time for that final final process of editing and proofreading. So, you know, the intention should be the application being clear, concise, and free of errors. So perhaps consider as a group, how long do you need to create your first draft? You know, what's a reasonable amount of time? When should we check in as a group with one another? Do we need to plan meetings? Things like that. Um, do I need input from any others that are in my team? or in my workplace, so the things that are not yet clear. Recommend really kind of clarifying, again, not just who's doing what, but what input is being provided at what stages. That ensures in, with tight deadlines that you've got maximum opportunity for input. Have you got enough detail for each component? Sometimes applications are put in and they have fantastic detail in terms of processes, for example. And then when it comes to budget, maybe there's you know one or two items that can lead to imbalance. So again, make sure you've got sufficient detail for each component if you need to. Perhaps reach out to somebody who's not involved with the project, a mentor or a critical friend, somebody who can have a look and say, yeah, that looks good, or no, I think you need a little bit more detail, or this needs to be expressed a little bit more clearly or with a little bit more detail. Uh, and have you followed the instructions carefully, which are on the website? Um, so the next point I've done is, I thought this was quite useful in terms of identifying some of the most recent areas of focus within the all space. So here I've just basically identified the CIS topics that have been covered over the last two years. And I've put my own spin on these, but if you go back and look through, you'll see that basically these are the areas that have been prominent enough that we've had, um, you know, CIS sessions. So, you know, discipline specific offerings, across a range of different, um, you know, in institutional um, engagements, neurodiversity, generative AI, which, you know, is, is absolutely a, a massive one in our space, how we consider student perspectives, general sharing we've had about practices related to academic skills advising, We've had ones about all services and the integration. Here we mean in particular as a support service or as a service integrated with other units, whether they're academic units or student support units. The role of creativity and the positioning of the all practitioner in that, especially in relation to writing. Um, we've had a CIS last year on pedagogies, promoting disciplinary language acquisition. Also, ways of making better decisions in higher education. And again, like with generative AI, a very prominent and massive one, academic integrity. And so I put another reflective question, because I really like reflective questions here at the bottom. And this is one I'd like to open up to the floor. So this sort of ends the bit where I'm kind of doing all the talking and say, are there other themes or areas of focus that you would identify as emerging in the all space? that would be well suited to grant submission. I thought here we could potentially share as a group. 
So please feel free to turn on your microphone or say something or pop something into the chat. Is there anything else that you would add to this preliminary list that I've identified here? Hello, Michael. My Hi. name is Linda. Hi, Linda. I, um, I'm a mathematics learning advisor yes. um, based in Sydney. So um, I'm planning to uh, to apply for this grant and uh, um, I mainly focus for this specific um, grant. Um, I like to kind of um, focus on um, problem solving um, and um, basically look at it from a um, traditional point of view, which means like the existing strategies to help the students and also academics um, uh, for problem solving skills. So, and also added up with um, um, AI tools, upcoming tools and existing one that um, I also like to kind of incorporate that into um, this project as well. So look at it as both perspective. Um, and I was wondering uh, whether uh, numeracy skills, problem solving, plus AI tools could be also added to this list or is already Absolutely. kind of because I'm just, yeah, I'm just doing it. Absolutely, really Linda. What a, great, what a great one. And, and you know, I didn't put it on here because it's not one of those CIS topics, but that's one I brought in today thinking that is absolutely a great one. And again, yeah, I definitely you. think it's not just an emerging one. I think it's a long-term, you know, yeah. um, uh, feature uh, for all practitioners to consider. So yeah. it's a really great yeah. idea. Yeah, we think that um, that's going to be a massive project and uh, with a great impact. And we want to kind of work with different faculties um, and possibly uh, cross institution um, in Fantastic. the future. Yeah, but um, I can see a great potential in it. And um, I was hoping that maybe we can get some support from uh, from this group. Fantastic. And I encourage any of you online or... If you weren't able to attend today, if you were using the video, uh, watching the video, um, yeah, yeah, please connect with Linda um, and yeah, see if there's an opportunity for 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 um, linking up. Debbie, hi Linda. I was I, I just heard one word which really caught my attention, and that was numeracy. Yeah, uh, Linda. I mean, I would encourage you to just as Michael has suggested, because mm -hmm. while numeracy might appear to fall a wee bit out of the um, area of academic language. It's definitely part of academic learning. And right, yeah. last year we applied for a grant, myself uh, plus some colleagues at USQ, mm. uh, to develop a, an interactive academic numeracy framework, which That's is great. just about ready to be released. We already had the framework itself, but we yeah. we needed funding to support us with the actual interactivity because none of us were learning designers or storyline articulate people so yeah. Um, yeah but yeah i i would absolutely love to see more of that happening yeah. in our space yeah 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 i'm quite keen on it um i love problem solving and i think that's the area that students and also academics it's just both at the same Definitely. time they they need problems solving and yeah. they need to kind of yeah that's that's the area that normally people struggle the most and uh, I think this AI has potentially kind of um could could play a huge role in it yeah yeah I, and I think in terms of I, I kind of mentioned outputs earlier just based yeah. on what you're saying organically Linda I'm thinking there's you know and and Debbie's kind of affirmed this first of all it's very important and I think there's lots of potential you know creative outputs and impacts and sharing that can come from uh the kind of yeah. topic that you're identifying so yeah highly encourage you to to apply to you know follow that I mean if anyone uh listening is is interested in collaborating please contact uh Linda directly Thank you. Michael, could I just add one more thing yes. um, of a general nature? And that is um, wherever we can, uh, and if it is possible, it's not always possible in the projects that we do, but wherever we can, if things can be made as open access, um, it, in our case, we are providing our tool as an open access tool. It can't mm. be changed, but it can be uh, transported into people's own LMSs or wherever it, it might be. So um, it's just, you know, it, it's there on the horizon all the time in my mind around trying to do as much as we can in making materials available. 
across yeah. institutions. Yeah, thank well, you, Debbie. That's, been, that's, been, a, that's a really good point. Sorry, yeah, Linda. I've been chatting with... Um, uh, um, so I'm part of Academic Skill Unit, part of the Center for Education and Innovation, and I've been chatting um, about this with the manager, and he definitely likes the idea. And um, he also quite open to share the module because we we are thinking about creating a stand standalone module that we can share it with anybody across any institution or who is interested in problem solving um, strategies and. Um, yeah, and we are hoping to add it up with um, with AI things and make it more useful and relevant. So, um, yeah, we we're, we're quite open to share as well. If uh, when, when we build awesome. build that up, yeah, that's great. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for sharing. Does anybody else um, want to provide a response to any other potential themes or areas of focus? There's no need to. Just to... hi, George. Did you? Yes, George. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, George, you're on mute. <laughs> oh, it's not quite working. I'm sorry, is it just me that can't hear? No, it's... Oh, yes, we can hear you now, George. Okay, great, I fixed it up. Sorry about that. Um, okay. Yeah, so I'm also a um, mathematics learning advisor at Notre Dame. So numeracy um, is, I guess, my jam, or um, well, mathematics in general. Um, one project that I've been working on for maybe the last couple of years is on the chronic underpreparedness um, of um, our students at Notre Dame um, when they enter into um, science related or anything re re needing mathematics or numeracy, um, entering into our programs. Um, and we're talking about you know, grown adults who struggle with mathematics that the average 14 or 15 year old can do. Um, and it's not, you know, it's a subset of our students that need that support. And of course, um, where we as learning advisors come in is of course providing critical help there. Um, but um, uh, some academics at our institution about a decade ago identified and proposed the need for an actual deliberate intervention um, with, um, you know, and which also assesses the students' um, mathematics anxiety or growth mindset, and as well as their mathematics aptitude for basic, basic indicators of algebra, arithmetic, and problem solving and numeracy skills, um, to try and identify these students early in their degree program, um, and we the reason why we would like to apply for funding is because we believe that um, uh, underpreparedness of mathematics is a is A, it's a chronic problem, B, it's an international problem, C, it's, it's a, it's a, um, it's not just institutional, it's worldwide. Um, although our project isn't going to reach worldwide, but well, it is a very important problem. Um, but in particular with um, our institution, with our, with our demographic of students who are not looking to become mathematics majors, we need to ensure that they have retained a basic core set of mathematics skills for going into the, the you know, health sciences, nursing and education and business and so forth to become functional members of society. Um, and if they can't convert fractions to percentages, then they can't function as nurses. And this is this has um, critical um, implications for people's health and well-being in the real world. Um, most of our students go out into the real world and affect real world people's lives as opposed to, um, you know, becoming pure mathematicians, I guess, um, or theoreticians. Um, so this is a critical and a chronic problem. It's been documented for more than a decade um, at our institution and for several decades in Australia. Um, and of course, the trend has been worsening. Um, we, although it's not one of these key areas of focus, we feel that underpreparedness is is such a chronic issue in Australian tertiary education that it that it needs more direct intervention as opposed to you know come and see a learning advisor if you feel like it. Mm -hmm. um, so that is what we applied for funding. We've it's it's been hard to get it off the ground because I work part time and other academics are teaching you know with heavy teaching loads um so the funding would allow um, us to employ um a research assistant to work on the design and the analysis 
mm -hmm. um, of the um, of the intervention and also the research. So it's going to have both teaching outcomes and research outcomes as well. You know that that sounds that sounds really great. Um, and yeah, I would recommend just from my perspective too, the fact that you've identified a couple of times there, George, that you know this is this the, the, the you know the underpreparedness. That's a, a really, in my view, well um, researched area and i would tap into that and ensure that you're finding the most useful and timely you know um, instances where where that's helping you to you know demonstrate the research gap and and um, you know bring that into your application um you know if you can bring those in and you know demonstrate how it aligns that that will really strengthen your application and yeah again something i've heard from others from other institutions too is is really critical and really prominent. So I think that sounds like a great project too. Thank you. Great. Any Anybody else? We've got a few minutes left. I'm aware that the time is um, dwindling and I, I, uh, our institution doesn't have the <clears throat> commercial version of Zoom. So I've got a 45 minute uh, limit. I will just show you, these slides I will make available, but I will just quickly, if there aren't any more questions, I will just show the remainder of the slides, I thought it was useful just to show the projects that have been funded by other related institutions. So these ones are from Herdza last year, and these are just titles for projects. And again, I feel like if you look at the previous slide that identifies what we've done in terms of our CIS projects, and then Herdza's funding, there is definitely, links is definitely clear looking for prominence, you know, assessment practices, student perspectives or storytelling, you know, research experiences. Uh, I think this mindedness, I think if you look carefully, it's a form of mindfulness that they propose here, you know, co-design, uh, student motivation. Uh, I really think that being able to tie to some of these prominent, if you can, um, is really helpful. And then I've also got the ones from Alden Her, which is kind of the British version of all. Uh, and these were projects that were funded this year. So I feel like there's a bit more of artificial intelligence in this one. So you'll see two projects reference uh, generative AI, uh, you know, um, toolkits, for example, peers, you know, anything that relates to, to, to those kind of areas. Students as partners, again, that kind of peer focus. Um, essays have been a lot of discussion about are essays still, you know, useful or do they have a point? That's again about assessment. Um, a point here about doctoral studies, you know, equity, um, EDI, equity, diversity and inclusion, that's hearing, appearing twice, and employability. And I know that we hear professionally these terms quite regularly, um, but again, I think they do indicate the, the, their prominence um, a, a, as an area of focus. So those will be available. You're welcome to have a look at those um, as you're adjusting your... Um, especially your titles, you know, I thought this is a good way of looking at, you know, the type of projects that have been funded by like-minded institutions. Um, I don't have anything else there except any, an opportunity if anyone has any suggestions or recommendations based on what we've covered today or based on the process. Um, I'm still new to the grants, being the grants award lead. Um, and apart from changing the funding and having this PD session, uh, an opportunity just to give a little bit more context for applying for grants. If there's anything else um, that you wish to share or would like to see or have any queries about, that's my email address and you're very, very welcome to contact me. I'm going to stop sharing and just check the chat because I saw that there were some, some points in here. Uh, Linda, yes, uh, I will make the slides about, oh, sorry, that's probably an, an earlier question. I'm going to put them into the into the uh, this chat now, so they should be available to you. Um, Nicholas, you probably might come back to the recording. Thank you for attending. Sorry for the people that have had to go. Um, does anybody else have anything or any queries or any questions uh, that they would like to have uh, to, to, to sort of point out now? No, thank you very much for attending. Um, I will find a way to make these slides available. Um, and if you have any more queries, please uh, do feel free to can contact me directly. Thank you very much for attending, everyone. Bye. Thank you.